Columbus Coliseum, a place traveler calls home and the crowd loves to fight on when supporting the USC Trojans. We have a ranked versus unranked battle coming up here, and you know how chaos can ensue if they start smelling an upset. As we'll see a squad from the Big Ten, the Iowa Hawkeyes, taking on the 18th ranked team in the land, the USC Trojans. For EA Sports College Football, I'm Reese Davis, joined here in the booth by David Pollock and Jesse Palmer. And guys, let's get this thing started. Hawkeyes will boot it away to start the game. He'll bring it out. It's Hudson. He's brought down to the 16. Would have been much better off to take the touchback. So USC's offense takes the field. And these guys involve everybody in the passing game and none more prominent than this big fella. The quarterback knows he's going to be under duress in this game. So who do you look for? The tight end. And there aren't many better than this guy. No, and just big bodies that you can miss a little bit high, and it really doesn't matter. But over the middle of the field, closer throws, so nice to have a security blanket with a great tight end. Back to the ground with the running back. Stopped at the 25 after a five-yard gain. And to keep this opening drive going, they'll need to convert third and one. He'll do it himself. That just never had a chance as they controlled the middle of the field and stopped him in the backfield on third down. Fourth down, and the punt team sends it the other way. Slips through the line. He'll be brought down, but there is a flag on the field. Let's see what that one's about. Personal foul. Personal foul. Up in the kick. Up in the kick. The officials offer the deal, and the coach accepts it. They will take the penalty. From the gun, they'll try to impose their running game. Coaches always harp about staying ahead of the chains, and when you can run with that type of efficiency on first down, man, you are doing just that. Good spot after that seven-yard pickup on first down. It's second and three. The give to the back. Really nice stop there from this senior leader. Third and short from the 44, and we might know if they plan to go for it on fourth down by what they call here. Trying to pick it up on the ground. The Trojans pick up the first down. This drive has been exclusively on the ground. Could they be setting up a shot play? Someone moved a little early, and the offense will go backward. Ball start. Ball start. Ball start. So the decision has been made, and the coach will take the penalty. After the flag, first and 15 for this offense. From the shotgun, the handoff to the back. And he's able to bounce off one tackle, but still not a whole lot of running room. Line getting set on second down. Back to throw, it's Moss. And the quarterback is snowed under. Play action pass success has a lot to do with selling that fake. You could tell defense was not buying it, got in the backfield, got the big play. Now the eighth play of the opening drive, but this time facing third and long. Looking to throw and he needs a chunk play. And here comes the pressure, and there he goes down again. Man, you talk all week about setting the tone, quieting this crowd. Don't let him get involved. You know how you do that? Get a sack and force a punt on the first possession of the football game. That's a heck of a start for this defense. No return coming. He'll call for the fair catch. So Iowa's offense will try to get something going with their first possession. As we take a look at our impact, they have to lead the football team, but they got to step up and make plays on the field, keep everybody calm. These guys typically do a really good job of it. Yeah, David, the, and they also generally set the tone for their respective football teams. Regardless of which side of the ball they play on, the teammates look towards them to step up in big games like this. This crowd, full throat, splitting the eardrums and letting them know it's going to be a long day. What a good one there. He has enough for the first down. Here's this offense with a fresh set of downs. And, uh, 
The give to the tailback. Able to scrounge three yards out of that one somehow. It's second and seven. Tried to pound it on first down. Now back to the line. They'll run the off tackle play here. He's dropped behind the line of scrimmage. That'll be a loss of three. Better find the earplugs. Here comes the noise. Backing this defense on third down. Trying to get to it. And he can't escape, and down he goes. Man, early in the game, I love when you set the tone and make the quarterback feel uncomfortable. Nice job getting him on the ground, getting your first sack of the day. Listen, they have three last week, but they want to continue to build on that number and keep getting it higher, and that's a great start. And that one will find its way into the end zone for a touchback. We've reached the end of the first quarter, and it has been a defensive battle, and the stats tell the tale so far. They'll break the seal on this quarter here on first down. A little misdirection and the handoff on the counter. Not much there. Picks up a couple to the 22. Picked up two yards on that last one. They need eight on second down. They'll run it behind the big guys on the left. And he's ridden to the ground, but there's also a flag down. Let's check the call. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. They say you could call holding on every play. Well, they did on that one. Looking to throw, it's Moss. Finds his man down the middle. They bring him down, but a solid pick up to put them in position to pick up a first down. If they can convert here, that type of play can really give you a shot of momentum. On third and long, try to convert through the air. And the Heat will get home, and the quarterback goes down at the 17. Yeah, and how about this defense, man? That's the third sack of the day. They've been putting pressure, getting them on the ground. Not something they've been good at throughout this season. This defense playing better because they're getting more pressure on the quarterback. He'll settle for some pretty good field position and make the fair catch at around the 35. Iowa has it back on offense, hoping to ride the wave to the end zone. David, the putter got some work last time. They'd like to keep him on the sidelines in this drive. Yeah, it's not something you want to say very often. You don't want the putter. This offense needs to get back lathered up and get a little bit more of a rhythm. Best way to do that, identify where your best players are and just get them the football. Give these guys some touches to kickstart this offense. He knew exactly where he wanted to go with that one, and they've got enough for the first down. Leaves it with the back. He's knocked down in the backfield. He'll lose a couple. Let's see what they've got on second down. Wide receiver now comes in motion. He's looking for a man on second down. Grabbed on the outside, it's Anderson. And he is run out of bounds as they go backwards there and just avoided the contact. And with this place rocking, the crowd forces a false start. False start. False start. False start. The officials offer the deal, and the coach accepts it. They will take the penalty. On third and long, you'll have to turn it loose deep. Makes a connection. Oh, and the defense in chase mode, and they finally get him down at the 35. And the Hawkeyes want to pick up the tempo. This guy's gotten off to a good statistical start, guys, but that last completion, he's already now over 1,000 passing yards on the season, and, man, you know he's looking for more. Productive four-yard gain there on the ground as he gets it down to the 31. After the productive first down play, it's second and six. Looking to throw, it's McNamara. Quickly to the tight end. And that is good versatility there. And a big hit from the backer in pass coverage. We'll take a quick break here. Two minutes to play in the first half. Third and short from the 26. Pretty easy field goal range, but they'd love to pick up the first. Gets it out fast. Good job running that route to get past the sticks because he got nothing after the catch. Trying to find his man on first down. Caught near the sideline, it's Gill. And he goes out of bounds after coming up with positive yardage there. Wants to throw on second down. He's got the tight end. 
Defense makes a stop, but the chains move, and it's first and goal from the eight. He's looking to throw. He's got it on the run. And that defense is there to guide him out of bounds after a short game. They've got it down to the three. Now it's second and goal. They'll try to slam it in. He's got it down to the one-yard line right on the doorstep of Pater. Offense calls a timeout here. Critically important to make sure they have the right play call and everyone on the same page here. Trying to pound it in. Into the end zone he goes. Touchdown, Hawkeyes. And that is exactly what you want from your offense. Man, late in the half, you want to execute and then punch it in physically on the ground. Take the lead going into the half. Take all the momentum. Nice execution on the drive by that offense. They'll try to add another to their lead. And he's got the extra point, and it's 7-0 to start this one. And let's check in with Kevin Connors in the studio. Kevin? Gentlemen, let's take a look at what's happening in a terrific top 15 matchup. Georgia is on top, but this is a close game. And, you know, back in the day, you'd feed Herschel and Walker and go home. That guy needs to emerge for them today. They're up by 10 over Alabama. Any big developments in this one, we've got you covered with the best studio team in the business. Gentlemen? And how about that one? Kevin will be keeping an eye on everything going on elsewhere. There's a timeout called as this offense tries to find a way to draw a little closer. Quickly complete. And they wrap him up, but not before he gets enough on the catch for the first down. We've got a timeout here late in the first half, and they'll try to get more points on the board before the break. And a nine-yard gain on first down leaves it with second and short. The offense uses a timeout to stop the clock, and they'll get a quick breather. To the air, it's Moss. Fires to the middle. Excellent coverage and good use of the hands to knock it away. Went up top on second down. That leaves him needing a yard here on third down. Out of the backfield, he's open. That'll be enough for the first down as they stop him at the 43-yard line. Clock stops momentarily for the first down. They'll hurry to the line. Going up top on first down. Got it in the middle. It's O'Neal. And they'll finally bring him down after he rips off a huge play. And the Trojans want to crank the tempo. Every second is meaningful, and they save a few of them with the spike. Offense walks to the line for play number seven of the drive. On second down, they'll take to the air. He just tossed that one out of bounds. You avoid the sack, you avoid the turnover. You've got more plays here on third down. From the gun, wants to pass. Had nowhere to go with that one. Had to just throw it away. A wise decision to keep the field goal in play. So now on fourth down, they'll try to salvage a three and just get points before halftime. And the kicker delivers the three to salvage that drive. And this guy has been a machine all season long. He is absolutely automatic. You know you're getting three points when this guy jogs on the field. So they get the late field goal right before the half and not much time after this kickoff for an answer. On the move from inside is five. And the coverage team able to wrestle him down. So the offense has had enough. They'll take a knee and wrap up this first half. We played two quarters here. Time to go to Kevin Connors in our halftime update. Men, we've been looking forward to this one all week. A fun start to things in L.A. And I get it. A lot of coaches will say the difference between winning and losing comes down to stopping big plays and getting big plays. But if you ask me, it's more about how good you are on third down and how efficient you are in keeping drives alive. Those two stats can help you break the will of even the best defenses and help you come out on top. With that said, let's send it back to the guys at the L.A. Coliseum. The Trojans will boot it away to start the second half. 
He'll bring it back from inside his five. He was looking for some running room, but not much to be found as he stopped at the 18. Iowa has the ball back on offense. And in a low-scoring game like this one, David, every possession is magnified. And I think more than anything, it just gets frustrating. And you got to put that behind you. you got to see what this defense has been doing to be so successful. Caller, now use it against them. Yeah, David, I think for a play caller, this is tough, right? It's like you have to have the perfect play on just to get a first down. In these types of games, I think you're just trying to get guys out in space, see if a dude can break a tackle. Maybe that generates an explosive play, and it breaks this trend. All kinds of time to survey the field, and he'll let it go to the left. And this is dropped. Incomplete pass. He had a huge game in his fingers, and he couldn't hold on. Fourth down, and the punt team sends it the other way. He was able to get that ball up to the 48-yard line before he stopped on the return. They'll start this drive at their own 48. Tip ball put it up for grabs, and I thought he had it, but somehow it slithered through his fingers. After they couldn't connect, it's second and 10. Scanning the field, it's Moss. Right on the money to the outside. He dragged the toe. And how about the ball placement? Only the receiver could get it. From the gun, running back on the move. He's knocked down in the backfield. He'll lose a couple. And here comes the offense on second down. Gives it to the back on the draw. They make the stop, but not before he takes a chunk out of what they need to move the sticks. How bold will they be on third down after that last run? Trying to make that rush think on the draw play here. And the defense knew exactly where that first down line was, and they stopped him short. Now on fourth down, they'll settle for a field goal try. Tried to give it enough body English, but he missed it. And guys, still down by four, still needing a touchdown to take the lead. Iowa has it back on offense, hoping to ride the wave to the end zone. The sledding has been tough. Scores have been at a premium, Jesse, and every possession seems like it could switch the momentum of the game. Yeah, Reese, for this offense, it just feels like they just haven't been as physical. For this offensive coordinator, David, he's having to go deep into the playbook just to try to generate a first down. Well, and the good thing is there's not a ton of game pressure because the other side's not scoring either. But if you can find that one thing that... Get that one positive play, and then maybe you get those juices going, and something can start to build. And he was fortunate not to lose yardage on that play, able to wedge it back to the line of scrimmage. Got stuffed on first down. It's second and ten. Dropping back, it's McNamara. Let's it fly! And they're not on the same page there. Decibels rising as the crowd gets behind this defense on third down. From the gun, wants to pass. Didn't have anything working and just had to throw it away on third down. The Hawkeyes will send out the punt unit. Fair catch is made, but there is laundry on the deck, so we might be having a do-over. Personal foul. Personal foul. Look at the Look kicker. kicker. Defense. Defense. So the decision has been made, and the coach will take the penalty. So the offense keeps his drive alive thanks to the roughing the punter penalty. Squeezes out a couple of yards down to the 32. Picked up two yards on that last when they need eight on second down. They go to the ground. He is tackled, but it'll be a fresh set of downs. And the Hawkeyes are moving quickly down the field. They'll throw it on first down. Quickly complete. And he goes down after making the grab. Picks up a few, but still short of the first down. 
One running back in the backfield, and he has it. Pushing ahead, a tough run. Picks up four, it's down at the 15. This crowd knows this defense needs them right now. The give to the fullback. And the defense is swarming to keep him from getting to the first down. And here comes the field goal unit. That's the end of the quarter, and Iowa is on top. They've built a cushion. They've got a nice lead. Now the task is finish the deal as you take a look at the third quarter stats. One more period to go to see who can make the winning plays and come home with the victory. So on fourth down, here comes the field goal kicker in a huge spot. He got it. And three more on the board, and this kicker is starting to get a reputation starting off the season. Hasn't missed yet. Nice to have a guy that you can really, really depend on. They'll kick it away after putting up a field goal on that last drive. He'll bring it out. It's Hudson. They drag him down at the 22. He gambled for the big return out of the end zone and came up a little short. This Trojan offense is ready to go back to work. Trying to start the drive with a pass. And he makes the grab, but the officials immediately signal that he's out of bounds. And after the incompletion on first down, this offense looking at second down. Throws to the wideout. Makes the grab. That is exactly what you're looking for when you talk explosive plays. The defense finally able to make the stop. Takes the handoff. It's O'Neal. That play just never had a chance. They knock him down for a loss of five. He'll try to overcome that last play on second and 15. Keep it on the ground. They make the stop, but there is a flag on the field. We'll see what that's all about. Personal foul. Personal foul. Personal foul. Personal foul. Personal. Face mask penalty cost the D 15 yards and a first down. The offense comes back out with a new set of downs after the penalty. Here's a quick throw out to the left. And he's a real nowhere man tackled in this no-game land. Quick pass on the jet motion. Really good pickup on second down there. Leaves him with third and two. Trying to pick up a first down. Looking to move the chains. They throw it complete to the left. They're able to get him stopped just shy of the first down mark. Offense facing fourth down. Here we go with the run on fourth down. They stop him short of the marker and they'll turn it over on downs. On first down, here comes this offense. Power football with the run. They'll pick up four, second and six coming. Got a little work done on first down, now back to the line. He'll try it again. And he's to the 48-yard line. That'll be good enough for a first down. Here's this offense with a fresh set of downs. They'll try to keep this clock moving on the ground. And a really nice run and pick up there before the defense avoided disaster and stopped the really big play. Motion from the offense. They'll leave it with him. Trying to impose their will on the ground as he stopped after a five-yard pickup to the 33. Halfway there on first down, it's second and five. He'll try the left side. And this one will be stopped for no gain. We have arrived at the two-minute warning, a one-possession game as this offense tries to hold on. Handoff to the single running back. And there were some collisions in there in the deep. 
defense uses a timeout quickly, trying to get that ball back and preserve time for their offense. Never a doubt for this big-footed guy. 49-yard field goal is good. We check in with Kevin Connors. What's going on, Kevin? All right, Phyllis, here's a final update on a top 15 clash. Ohio State went on the road and just dominated. And that's one way to grab attention on a national level. Make a statement in someone else's building and prove you're legit. And did the Buckeyes ever do that? Fires to the wideout. It's complete. No cupcakes this week, fellas. This top 15 battle was much anticipated, and at least one side can say it's a game they'll savor for some time. And Kevin Connors keeping an eye on everything all over the country. Sounds like they had a good one there. Quarterback by himself in the backfield. Back to throw, it's Moss. Wide open downfield. They'll finally drag him down, but not before he gets it to the 40, and it's a first down. He wants to throw. Just had to get rid of that one. Good job to avoid the loss. After the quarterback and receiver failed to hook up, they'll try it again on second down. He's looking to throw. Reacted well to the tip, but just couldn't squeeze the football. Instead of the turnover, it'll be third down. From the gun, wants to pass. Unloads to the wideout. He's missed three in a row now with that last incompletion. Down by multiple possessions. You can't come up empty on this drive. They'll go for it on fourth down. He lobs one high down the left side. It's in, and they desperately needed to keep that drive going, and they couldn't make the connection. The give is to Williams. How about that elusiveness? He's got space. Off he goes. A huge play there as he has it inside the 20 at the 19. Timeout called there by the defense, desperate to get the ball back and save as much time as possible. And it looks as if the offense will just take a knee. Not exactly a ton of points in this one. They just couldn't overcome the offensive struggles and come up short. And that's a bad feeling when you're the offense because you see your defense time and time again getting stops, giving you the football back, and giving you an opportunity. The offense, they just couldn't pull their own weight. I hear you. It's a bad feeling for the offense, but it really sucks for us as defense because we got to keep going back on the field time and time again with no offensive support. A lot of times the frustration will lead on the sidelines. You'll see people getting angry, but the offense has got to do a better job. That's going to do it for us from here. For Jesse Palmer, David Pollock, I'm Reese.